All right, warriors, we're gonna do a breathing exercise. We're not skipping it. Five seconds, we're gonna breathe in deep. We're gonna hold it and release together. No, this isn't a spiritual guru. Uh, we're, not, we're not taking those kind of deep dives here. This is about narcissist abuse and how to recover from that. How to demolish that trauma bond where it doesn't trigger you, but it does make available to you a lesson learned so that now people that are in your present or your future won't be able to get you entangled in that web again. Because understand, the spirit of the manipulator hops. What do I mean by that? It's passed down. It's a generational curse. You see it. It's why it's so important that many in the coaching arena that, that deal in relationships, or relationships, they will try and let you understand how important it is to meet the family because it's a great indicator of what it is you're getting involved with before you do the vertical lambada. You feel me? Many of you go dancing with the devil before and then discovery is found later. See, discovery... It's for those that are trying to report on something that's already happened. In the legal system, discovery, that's exactly what it is. You need to put that at the forefront. Discover first what the hell you're dealing with before you go swap and spit with it. Five seconds is going to get us to clear a little section in our minds. Not to forget shit, because we don't want to ever forget. We just don't want it to become a butt hurt so that you're punishing people in your present and your future for transgressions that narcissists created. They want you to pass that on and on and on and continue in the loop they're stuck in. They want to destroy the love and kindness in your heart, your soft side. And what I'm trying to train you to do is let people know how big a heart you have but they can't see the wings of protection that guard your heart. Because you can exercise your silence without being provoked and your walk away game is gonna be dead on. They will never even know it because you're not gonna expose it. They're just never gonna see you again. And therefore, you've rendered yourself a meaningless target. It's kinda of like walking the zombie walk. Hemotep, hemotep, and blending and moving on. Narcissists only seek out those they can provoke because those can be manipulated. They're not aware yet. Let's get you out of that. Let's get you out of the friend zone, the harem closet, a booty call. Warriors, five seconds. Let's take a deep breath. Let's hold it. Let's release it and take a badass walk on that beach. You ready? It's only going to take five fucking seconds, man. Come on. Let's do this. Release slowly. <laughs> All right. Shake that shit off, y'all. Now, let my blind ass put these readers on. Rears. These are rears. <laughs> Look, this is what I want you to pay attention to. Because when I say narcissists tell on themselves, it's a sleight of hands. It sounds like they're just being curious, right? It, it, friendly conversations. This is what you're looking for. If you haven't seen someone for a while that day and then in the evening or later that day at lunch, whatever, they come up with questions like, how was work today? But they say it in a weird way, kind of like, how was work today? Oh, really? Nothing happened, huh? Nothing? How was your drive? Was anything interesting happen on your drive to work or on the way back? Really? How about this one? So you mean everything was great today? You're passing it off as, well, that was odd, but, and you didn't pay attention to it. You dismissed it because you don't think like that, because you're not a manipulator. You're not one trying to set someone up and destroy 
And so what you're missing out on in these kind of questions, and now you're going to start paying attention to it, is this. They're needing to know if they need to make a return visit and pay on a booty call because they were supposed to gang stalk you. You were supposed to have an accident. At work, maybe you were supposed to get some x lax put in your fucking coffee and you're supposed to have the shits all day. Or somebody's supposed to drug you. Maybe cause caused you to have an anxiety attack, an ambulance call. On your drive home or back to, or back to work, you're supposed to have an accident. A oopsie daisy, right? Now they need to know who do they need to pay. Because let me tell you, gang stalkers aren't in it just because. They're either benefiting from the booty call, pillow talk, or they're being paid. And the only way the narcissist knows that a payout is due is to hear it from you. Man, I had a crazy ass day. Can you believe it? I got cut off, or I had somebody follow me, or I just felt like now you're confessing. Now they know this is a receipt. It should bring you into awareness in this. They're the shot caller. Now, if you're dealing with a narcissist that you know really doesn't have the aptitude or, or the ability to think that way, then understand they are being a puppet to a puppet master. And they're being convinced and told and schooled how to do it how to get you incarcerated, how to get uh, DV against you, how to make you look and or what antics to play to get you to have controlled schizophrenia. And then they play it out with witnesses in the neighborhood, work associates, whomever, to witness it, to give testimony later on their behalf. Now, False allegations can be drummed up by anybody. So I want you to pay attention to the difference. Gang stalking are other narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, borderlines, all trying to advance their narrative and set you up. Now, false allegations with the legal system is different. Because that's not gang stalking. Now you're being surveilled, surveilled. Surveillance is different. Although it's the same kind of surveillance tactics and recon, narcissists are sloppy with the gang stalking and they want you to see them because that would incite the, the, the schizophrenia. Law enforcement are going to be in vehicles, marked vehicles, and they're, you can tell them apart. But they're doing a job because now they have to act on knowledge shared with them and they need to investigate surveillance is different so don't get it twisted but understand surveillance if done by law enforcement is actually going to be your receipt that you have nothing to do with it and what happens is the narcissist that participated in the false allegation become the ones being surveilled all you need to do is be yourself. Eventually, law enforcement figures out that was a loss of taxpayer dollars. These people are on the up and up. The wrongful allegations now are going to be perjury. Because when they, anytime anyone gives false allegation, they sign an affidavit stating these statements to be true to the best of their knowledge. Now they're perjuring themselves. Now law enforcement is going to keep an eye on them trying to figure out who else is involved? What is the motive? Many of them end up getting set up by undercover cops trying to put a hit on somebody. And so they end up telling on themselves, I need you to stay the hell away. Because the more you become non-reactive, the more the setup intensifies. And they end up, they end up telling on themselves. So warriors, I'm going to give you a PSA, or how they call it, public service announcement. I was looking at some of the news, and now it's becoming quite common for thugs and those in the uh, skin trade. What they're doing is they're now putting these napkins with fentanyl or rags with fentanyl at the gas pump, at the nozzle. 
So if you see any rags or any napkins or anything like that at the pump, before you punch, get pump gas, move to another gas station. If you look around, you'll probably see somebody setting up waiting for you to pass out so they can haul you in the car. And now you're going to be pimped out. So warriors, watch for it. And don't take my word for it. I'm going to give you a reference. Look up on YouTube in the search engine. Type in HGTV dash host Egypt Sharad. Egypt. E-G-Y-P-T Sharad S-H-E-R-O-D. Just type that in and it should pop up expose this trafficking attempt. Watch that video from start to finish. Because someone, some narcissist thug tried to discredit the truth talker. And she came back to discredit the narcissist trying to suppress the truth. This is how they operate and this is why I want you to understand. You're not the only one. But stand your post. Speak your truth and allow others to share the shortcuts that you expose. Now, understand too, I want to touch a little bit on materialism and how it's binding and blinding. I'll tell you a joke. I don't even know if it's a joke. It, it was a story that I heard. Dang it, I wish I could remember where I hear these stories sometimes. But look, it was a, a millionaire and a fisherman sharing a, a glass of wine on a beach coast. And the fisherman's family were playing, the kids were playing, and he had, he had a boat. And the millionaire comes, sits down next to him. They're sharing this glass of wine and having a small talk. And the millionaire looks at him. He says, man, I want to share something with you. He said, you went out fishing today. He says, yeah. He said, and you caught enough for your family so fast. He said, you're good at that. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, I know a couple of hot pockets out there that have been in the family for a long time. He said, you know, if you do that and buy a boat, a bigger boat, and fish and do it and sell it and market and invest that in another boat and have you a fleet built and then start marketing that to the world, you could be a millionaire. He said, really? How long would that take? He said, well, who knows? Anywhere from 15, maybe 20 years, 30 years. But you'd be set. And he said, then what, I, what would I do with that? He said, well, then one day you could sell it all and reap the benefits of your hard work and sit down on a beach with your family enjoying a great glass of wine. He said, well, I appreciate the advice, but I'm already doing that. And the difference is, one gets to share with a family, and the other had to deprive the family of his or her attention to build up wealth. Warriors have balance to understand where you're needed and don't allow materialism to overwhelm your every thought where you deny yourself the ending. You see, one works to death for the dream while the other is living the dream. Can I get a what what? Warriors, y'all are badasses. I thank y'all for listening. Not hearing, for listening. But I want you to take this away today and apply it. Invoke the breathing exercise when provoked. Practice it while you're in your place of peace. And never ever forget to give thanks and gratitude to that which you believe in worship for opening your eyes. But honor that also by becoming stronger and being able to eventually scream your war cry without hesitation, saving lives, sharing the shortcuts in life, and enjoying that glass of wine on the beach. 
because you're living the dream. Thanks for your support, warriors. Thanks for being there with each other, or for each other, and for sharing those badass remarks. I appreciate the likes, but more than anything, be sure and subscribe. The algorithms shared this video as a suggestion, not by accident. It's because warriors before you saw it to be beneficial enough to subscribe so that it can be passed forward. Thank you again for all your support. Les mando besos y abrazos. Namaste.